Well hello and welcome to my latest video. I've not done a video for a while and more to the point I haven't done a movie review for a while. So tonight's video movie review The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry. Uh, what's it like? Is it any good? Should you spend your money stick around and you'll find out. Now if you are an aficionado of the movies like I am you will know all about green screen. What is green screen? Actually I don't know because I'm not that much of an aficionado but this is not a green screen film. This is what I am calling uh, grey screen or uh, silver screen or faint bit of red touched with quite a lot of grey going white screen and that and what I mean by that is there is a kind of there's a genre of films which is about old people and is made for old people and it's about old people doing old people type of things. Now is that something that young people should be interested in? Well I don't know who was it who said that youth is wasted on the young. Sometimes I think that old age is wasted on the old because all the fun that you want to have when you're old you just can't do it anymore because you know things don't work as they're supposed to do. So what you want to be is you want to be young and old and you want to be old when you're young but anyway leave that bit to one side. So what is this film about? Well uh, Harold Fry he lives in Devon with his wife there is a backstory with a certain sadness to it which I won't go into. Uh, receives a letter out of the blue from an old uh, um, work colleague of his who's uh, in a hospice and is dying in Berwick-upon-Tweed of all places which I suppose rather well, conveniently for the film is 450 miles away from Devon so he plans to write her a letter saying sorry to hear your sad news uh, love uh, and then he says no I'm not going to send the letter I'm going to walk I'm going to make my pilgrimage to the hospice in Berwick-upon-Tweed and she will live long enough until I get there. Now I'll leave it to you to decide whether you think or whether he does succeed or whether he doesn't whether she lives long enough I mean <laughs> this this walk takes 62 days I mean hospice care I mean they're going to think hang on a minute mate we need the bed but I'm not giving away the ending I'm not giving away the ending now the film I suppose the way to describe it really is, is it does what it says on the tin I mean Jim Broadbent has Harold Fry he does this walk 450 miles meets various people on the way and he ends up in Berwick-upon-Tweed and there is a certain amount of his backstory and the, the story of his uh, wife and his uh, marriage which is not doing particularly well and the reason for that is in the backstory which again I don't want to give away. So but what the thing about it is I was always a big fan of J.D. Salinger. Now what everybody knows about J.D. Salinger is that he wrote The Catcher in the Rye which is a massive 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 success but he also wrote a number of other novels which I'm going to go out on a limb and say most people have probably not read. But one of them which I think and I suppose I ought to know this, I think is Franny and Zooey, but it may be Ray's Highland Roof Bean Carpenters. He refers uh, to a book called The Way of a Pilgrim. And The Way of the Pilgrim was a book written, I think, in the early part of the 20th century, but I'm not 100% sure. It was written by uh, somebody in Russia, again, I can't remember the name. And it was about somebody who sees a line in the Bible, which is pray without ceasing. And he thinks to himself, well, what, what, what does this mean? How can you do that? And so he sets out on a pilgrimage, basically, around the country to talk to various wise people and in Channel 4 news presenters and so forth to try and work out what does this mean, pray without ceasing, how can you do it? So that way of a pilgrim, and then I think the return of the pilgrim or something like that, or pilgrim to, something like that. Anyway, I really enjoyed it. So this is about Harold Fry and his pilgrimage. And I suppose what it's saying really is that we, all of us, young and old, have a pilgrimage inside us, but we don't always know what it is. We may even have done it and not realised we were doing a, pilgrim, a pilgrimage. I, I had some thoughts, dreams, all dreams actually. I got to the point of doing some serious planning because I wanted to do the uh, Camino de Santiago, in other words, the pilgrimage walk or cycle uh, to, uh, to, <laughs> I've forgotten, it's, 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 is it Santiago? It's the way of St James anyway in northern Spain, that's where you end up. 
And not because I'm a religious person, but because I'm not. But I suppose because everybody has a pilgrimage inside them that they want to do. And this is about Harold Fry, Jim Broadbent's pilgrimage. I suppose in a way it's also about Jim Broadbent's pilgrimage. A man who's perhaps coming to the end of his rather long, rather long, suggests that it's over long. I don't really mean that. I don't mean that in a pejorative sense at all. It's his long acting career. Now there is a group of actors, which Broad, uh, Jim Broadbent is one. Bill Nye is another one, I suppose, amongst the, amongst the men and amongst the women. Uh, there are three, I suppose. Judy Dench, who I think is still alive. Uh, Alison Stedman, who's in that thing on Netflix, you know, 23 Walks, which is another grey screen, silver screen film about old people doing old people things with other poor people that they wish they were young because so only could have more fun doing it. And Penelope Wilton, who, as it happens, is in this film playing Howard Fry's wife. And she is very good. Why would she not be? She's done this kind of role plenty of times, as is Jim Broadbent. And why would he not be? He's done this role plenty of times. So um, I, the first thing to say is, if you're, I don't know, 14, are you going to enjoy this film? No. No. There's, no. there's no sex in it. There's no violence. There's no death. There's a tiny little bit of drugs. Um, if you're 27, are you going to enjoy this film? Probably not, actually. There's not, it's not a lot in it for you. If you're, I don't know, 51, are you going to enjoy this film? Well, you might, but you might think, hang on a minute, am I old enough? And if you're my age, 67, you think, actually, I want to see a film with a bit of sex and violence. And fuck all these old people doing old people things and having pilgrimage and so on and so forth. But no, I, 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 I jest. I jest and I digress. It's an enjoyable film if you are a certain age and if you like this kind of thing. Uh, written by uh, a screenplay by Rachel Joyce from her novel, uh, directed by a lady whose name I can't remember, but I shall put on the uh, bottom of the screen. And the director of cinematography is also a woman, which I think is um, sounds a bit patronising to say that's a great thing. But I mean, obviously, there should be more women in the movies. And it's still a little bit surprising uh, to see so many women involved in the film and in such a good film as well, which again sounds a little bit patronising to me. Julia, really, Julia, you know, time to, time to, time to what, actually? So, that's it. Um, they have some previews and trailers for some other films. I thought, oh, fuck me, I thought I'd go and see that. But they did have one for the new Wes Anderson film, which is called Asteroid City, and I certainly want to go and see that. So, um, a little bit rambling, that review, I suppose. Is it as good as some of my other ones? Maybe, maybe not. Um, am I glad to be back? Well, you can answer that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.